What's up, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? What's up, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? Do me a favor and uh, chill while we get started. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. But we live in time. Okay, we live already. Um, uh, how, how's everybody doing? Type in chat how you guys are doing. Let me know how you guys are doing. That's good, good. That's always a good thing. Always a good thing. My guy. Always good. That's always good. We got Dave in the house. Always good. Lost my... I don't know what that means. I, I mean, I, I know that. I know what that means. I just didn't know what it meant. That phrase. I'm like, what you mean? Did he, like, did he leave it at the store or something? Did he go pick it up? <laughs> did you reclaim what's yours? He left it on the broker. Damn. The broker claims that another one. Actually, that's something that we're going to talk about today. Before we look for some trades. It's, I was uh, on a call earlier with who I'm considering, I guess, my mentor. We we're talking about a few things. And I got some insight, and I feel like I should pass it on to you guys. And then we're going to use math to prove the insight. And we'll go from there, right? We're going to look for trades too. Don't worry. We will. This is being recorded as well so that we can always go back to it and uh, use it as a, I guess, a He's ready to take the lawyers. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I read lawyers. The broker's lobster money. Do you? The all right. We got a few people on. I'm I'm in the mood to get started, and this is gonna since I'm gonna be talking a bit. I'm gonna start now, right? So, all right. So there's a few things I wanted to talk about, right? Um, how much money, right? How much? All right, do me a favor. There's a few of you guys in here, right? So do me a favor. Type how much money you're looking to deposit to make money on the, like in your account. So let's say right now you're going to deposit money into your account. What is it that you plan to deposit? I'm just trying to gauge something right now. And there's a few of you guys, so I should read a few answers. A hundred. Right, that's one good Jason who else? 50 bucks all right 300 okay 100 bucks got it 60 to 200 that's dope all right who else anybody else in here everybody do me a favor everybody in here type it 100 if you're here type it 300 good good anybody else who else is here let me see Peter Q, you're all y'all right. Because now I'm about to we about to break things down. All right, cool. So 100, 300, 100, pretty much anywhere between. You can tell this guy's my cousin because he never paid attention to this shit. Uh, the question was, how much do you look to deposit into your account when you like let's say right now you're gonna deposit into your account to make money, to actually make money. Um how much you deposit? Two hundred. All right, bet. So I think the only person that didn't answer is Q, but there's a chance that Q might not be there. 
So it's fine. We'll just move on. So now, same, same, now, same people. They answered. We got one more person. Hold on. We got one more person. I want to know the answer to. Yo, RK. Um, and yo, yo, both of y'all that just came in. Y'all hear me? I think it's ML. MLEV. Why y'all got such weird, hard pronouncing ass names? RK and MLEV. I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. MLEV and RK. Whatever. Make me sound like I'm speaking to Russians. Listen. <laughs> MLEV and RK. Oh, fuck it. Then I can't make fun of you. All right, whatever. You, you got me. You made me feel like an asshole. But listen, that's not the point. The point is, let's say hypothetical right now, you guys were looking to deposit money into your broker. How much to make money? How much are you depositing? You can see some of the answers above. Be realistic. Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> he doesn't have a crazy one fifty hundred. I bet. How much do you just deposit? Five hundred. I bet. Now, since everybody here answered, let's let's we're gonna. I'm about to give y'all some. Goddamn! Somebody else has jumped in. Yo, whoever jumped in, DK. You there, DK? Yo, in the chat. If you there, DK, type how much money you deposit in your account when you're looking to make money. Let's say you're depositing right now. How much you depositing? Probably don't hear me. Oh, yeah, he does, he does, he does, he does, he does. My guy, DK. I bet 500. I bet so it's ranging from 50 to 500. All right, that's not that's that's cool. It doesn't matter where you start, the point is knowing where you start. Now, does every single one of you guys answer this? I want to know what is a re let's say, hypothetical, you have the best month of your trading career. How much money are you, are you looking to make in your best month of your trading career with the same deposit you just said? Every single one of you, I want to see all your answers. And don't be embarrassed. So just don't shy away. Be honest and put it out there. Because I want to I want to see something. Whoever, whoever hopped in and just missed out. Somebody just left to not answer, I think. Did somebody just leave so they don't have to answer that? <laughs> somebody, did a, somebody pulled a sham. All right. Thank you to everybody that's participating, by the way. All right. So now here's where things get good, right? A lot of you guys have reasonable goal expectations. Not going to lie to you, right? Like I'm looking at it right now. Like, for example, um, hold on. DK said he, DK, all you want to make is 500. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm tweeting. I think I'm tweeting. No, nah, I don't think that he said that. All right. So like, for example, Yolanda, Depositing 300 to make 2000 in a month. That's actually really good, right? Who's this? Who's under Yolanda? Oh, that's fucking streamer mode. I can't see who's under Yolanda, but I'm assuming it's fuck. I, I can't tell, but whoever you are, um, hold on. Let me disable this. Let me see now. Oh, Leanne, Leanne, you said you would deposit 300 to 3000. Not bad. Both. So both of you guys. For what for the type of trading that we're doing, this is super reasonable, right? Uh who else? Um uh, three hundred to three thousand, same thing with you. Super reasonable. I'm not thinking if you if you use proper discipline and risk man management, super reasonable. Dave. Dave said he wanna go from fifty to ten thousand. I'm not even gonna entertain that, Dave. You know I'm not I'm not even gonna feed into that right there. I think that's super unreasonable. You're probably gonna end up if you try that, you're gonna end up depositing fifty like ten times. <laughs> Which ends up being like 500. And even then, still kind of a stretch. Um, not sure. Don't worry. We're gonna, I'm going to give you a few different in, different ways to look at it in a second, right? Jason, 3K. So I need, I'm not even going to look back at what Jason said he deposited. Just 3K seems fine. 3K seems fine. 2,500 seems perfectly fine. 5K seems, even 5K seems perfectly fine. Jared said 10K. Jared said he deposits how much? Did Jared even answer that shit? Jared's slick. Jerry ain't even answer how much he deposit. Jerry's slick. See, that's why you can't. Oh, 100. So from 100 
to ten thousand, unrealistic. Yeah, but even but the reason why I said so. All right, so come on. The reason why I said best month ever is because it allows me to gauge what you assume you you would be making in your best month ever, right? With the deposit that that you made. Make sense? If that's if that's the pinnacle of what you think can happen, right? And I'm not saying that ten thousand is impossible because by all means I know you know that you could make more than ten thousand. I'm just saying the uh, at that point you're looking at flipping your account, right? Like if if you're looking at so so something that I was talking about with my mentor earlier, right? And it's probably part of the reason why some of you guys have this situation where you blow more accounts than you're making than you're than you're like than you're like withdrawing from. It probably comes down to this, right? I think a lot of people approach trading binary with a flipping with a flipping mindset where it's like I'm gonna turn 50 to 100 100 to two then and, and I get it can you theoretically can and it's really it's if you're the good good and you're confident it's not impossible and it's not, it's relatively e not easy but it could be easy so I get that mindset but that's also the trick that comes from that's a bro it's, it's a it's a it's like an illusion right or, or not an illusion it's more like a like a uh a temptation a misconception it, the idea of so so essentially what happens is this right you're presented with a beautiful idea right the idea of growing something exponentially fast exponentially big exponentially quickly right and so what happens is that th that idea grows a lot quicker when you see certain trades unravel right so why am i talking about that right because oftentimes the safest approach isn't the flipping approach right and what do I mean by that? So why is this whole thing important? All right, so going back to like the compounding thing, right? And it, it even goes back to like what I told you guys before. It's better to have two accounts than one. You should, you should, I'm not saying don't have a flipping account. Um, and if your intent is to flip an account, then you should always keep in mind that when you flip things, you can always lose, right? You can buy, you can try to buy a pair of sneakers to flip it. And those sneakers could be a bust and now you just took a loss, right? You can try to buy a car to flip it and that car can end up being a bust and now you took a loss, right? So if you're going into it with a flipping mindset, be prepared to take a loss. It's part of the flipping game. You understand? That makes sense? Okay, cool. So, so now, what are the other mindsets that you can have that still ultimately give you uh, the room to do to decide the route that you want. Well, for one, I'm not telling you to deviate from the flipping path, right? If there should always be, you should have, you should be able to do both, right? The flipping path should be something that you should consider doing with the smallest possible deposit while aiming for a reasonable with a uh, uh, profit margin, right? Going back to like what we were talking about earlier, for all of you guys that are that are thinking like fifty. To like three uh, to 50 to 500 and you're aiming for like two to, uh, for a thousand two thousand three thousand i think that's perfectly fine if you're thinking of that on a monthly basis right because again if you try to do the and we're going to dive into why i'm saying well, this is not going to be a rush session we're going to dive into we're going to break this down a little further but <clears throat> again the reason why i'm saving that doesn't sound like a lot of money but also that the fact of the matter is that if you try to do it too quick you're going to end up over trading and cost and costing yourself backward move so Essentially, if you try to squeeze those trades and you try to do it too quickly, essentially what happens is you end up making backward movement instead of forward movement. Now, if you project everything to, if you give yourself more time to uh, to hit those goals, more likely than not, you'll hit it, right? Right, so you see, so let's look at, let's just look at the numbers, right? Numbers, just perfect numbers, right? Here, there's two things you need to understand, right? If you track your progress on a monthly and annual basis, a lot of you guys will see the growth in your trading, right? Now, if you look at it on a daily to like weekly basis, you'll be setting yourself up because you'll have some good days and bad and good days and good weeks and bad days and bad weeks, right? But you have to look at it overall and what you want, right? Same way with how you look at your job, right? When you look at your job, you look at it as an annual salary, right? You go, oh, well, what's your annual salary, right? So think of it the same way. You need to look at it on an annual basis. And if you don't want to look at it on an annual basis, then the shortest you, you should consider is six months, right? That's how you should be measuring where you are. It shouldn't be like, oh, every day I'm measuring what I did because today could be a lucky day. This could just be an easy week. You get what I'm saying? 
your real progress is done and you look at it you'll track it over in six months to a year because it takes time to learn something implement it refine it and overall grow confidence in it is that is that making sense now in a year as a trader you get 252 days does that make sense be sure to type in the chat so i'm not just staring at the chat i mean, i bet so now these are the different ways that you can look at making money as a trader right you got the safe route right and now the safe route is anticlimactic super anticlimactic but if you think about it i'm pretty sure every single one of you can at this point if you've already done the if you've already traded on your own and you have a decent strike rate you could already probably do this right this is the safest route you can do and the reality is that a lot of you guys already have the potential to do this right so look at this example this example is calculating for a year again we're talking on an annual basis right on an annual basis right not on a monthly basis annual basis so here is essentially is saying that you're depositing a hundred dollars right you're focusing on the bare minimum every single time that you trade which is 10 percent. you can even go lower right you can even go lower if you want 10 percent to me is borderline fucking like yeah no i can't i don't know what number this is either but we'll get there don't worry about this number yet i don't even know what number this is it's a lot right it's a lot it's a lot right but just look at how it breaks down and this is why it's anticlimactic at first but again you're not for you for those of you <laughs> like for those of you that um for those of you that know that this is possible right just look at the look at the math and look at how the math maps right you deposit a hundred dollars in the beginning you're focusing on the bare minimum 10 percent of your account so if you make ten dollars which most of you guys have the potential of doing on a hundred dollar account and then the next time you trade you make what is it eleven dollars and every day you just focus on making ten percent not 10x in your account not a hundred x in your account not flipping your account ten times just focusing on the bare minimum again most of you guys already have the potential to do this right at the end of the 252 days or the trading year you would have an exponentially large number right and it won't reflect for a while you know what i'm saying like think about it first month you, you probably only made two thousand you know no not even first month you probably only made a thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars you compare that to what you see other people withdrawing and you think to yourself oh it's not enough when you don't realize is this right and we're gonna and now i'm gonna talk in general traders right the average the, the the best traders it doesn't matter if they trade stock futures uh, uh stock options uh, forex it doesn't matter what they trade what they trade right if there's funded accounts for them right if there's funded accounts for them then funded accounts their best doesn't matter if you use ftmo doesn't matter if you use apex for futures doesn't matter which one you use the best funded traders only get three to five percent on their accounts a, a month three to five percent that's what they're getting right the best not like no no so and, and here's where things get interesting right yes i am fully aware that there are people on the internet that are supposedly forex and everything gurus and they show 500 a million dollar days and stuff like that and the reality of that situation is most of the time there's more to that than you guys can see but FTMO and all these funded platforms that you have to, that they're the ones saying what you make, not you. They're the ones putting out the information. They're saying that the best traders are making three to 5%. Some of the most, like some of the, like even the more elite ones are probably hitting 10 to 12 monthly, right? The problem becomes that when, you, I mean, the, the advantage becomes that when you have a funded account, if you have a 200,000 funded account and you make 10 to 12% or 5% on it every month, you're making, you're still making good money. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you have, if you scale it up to a 500,000 account or a million dollar account, then you're making a lot of money, right? So it goes back to that, right? Like, and even then you just use the math, right? So understanding expectations. So if you understand that, then you know that a lot of these people that are sharing these abnormally high profits, um, they are either running a, their own, they either have a lot more money than what you have, or they're running their own kind of race, right? Like they're, they're taking abnormally high risks. Think about this, right? Think about this. Remember that one dude that we had that joined us and in his first day trading, he made $10,000. Y'all remember that guy? You remember that he deposited 700 and remember what his first trade was? 
His he deposited seven hundred. His first trade was seven hundred dollars. That's not. Think about this though. That is an 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 an, an anomaly, right? Why is that an anomaly? Because not everybody is going to be able to deposit seven hundred dollars and yolo that shit on their first trade. So it already, yeah. Now nah, he made his ten k. He was gone. He probably downloaded all my videos. Said I don't need to be here no more. I already learned what I need to learn and was out. The boy, what? I <laughs> that's hilarious. I don't. But but he's a perfect he's a perfect example of that, right? Like think about it like this. Most people have a hard time when they're new depositing more than like two hundred bucks. You get what I'm saying? So for somebody to jump in 700 and YOLO it, or is it surprising that he got to 10,000 his first day at that point? If he was willing to throw it all away in his first shot. He was going to get it too. I was going to get it for him too. But he disappeared. It saved me the money, brothers. Shit. Truth is, if you made, you made that much money, you should get me a pen. But you know what? I, 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 I'm still sticking by that, by the way. That has not changed. But yeah, so 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 um going to going to that, right? So you're gonna have random anomalies and you, you shouldn't base where you are and your progress on what the random anomalies make, right? You should focus on what I think that the reason why so many people don't get the results that they want is because they're not setting goals that will change their lives. They're just setting goals compared to goals that they seen other people hit, right? So instead of looking at your finances and going, ooh, an extra three to five thousand will change my life, you will look at let's say you go on Instagram, you'll see somebody made twelve thousand and you go, ooh, I need to make twelve thousand next. I'm guilty of that. You know what I'm saying? So if I if I'm speaking, I'll speak on it myself if I have to. But I'm guilty of that myself. You get what I'm saying? Whereas like if you actually look at it and then you go, Well, if I make this much money right now, let's say I got a job. Right. Let's say I, let's just hypothetically say I have had a job. Right. Let's talk about my, the last. I'm just going to talk about jobs based on the last job I ever had. I, this could be I could be way off. Right. I could be way off because I don't know what the job market. I haven't worked since 2012. Right. 2013. But I could be way off. Right. But just listen to how my job was. Right. So you have an understanding of how I would look at trading from that. And then we can talk about the numbers and go back to this. Right. My last job, I used to work 40 hours a week. I used to get paid $10 an hour. After taxes, I would keep $332 with 81 cents every week, right? I believe it was every week or every, whatever, every week or every two weeks, whatever. Okay. That was my check, $331, $332, 81 cents. I know that because that's all, I would never make more than that, right? A month, I was making $1,200. You know how ridiculous that is? I was working 40 hours a goddamn week, but whatever, no, you know, whatever, no room to judge, right? This was a long time ago, so maybe that was a lot of money back then. I have no idea, right? I have no idea. I had a different way of looking at money back then. But now here's where things get interesting, right? 1200 If I was still in that position today, hypothetical, right? Then I would look at my life and I would go, how much money do I need? To feel like I'm living the life that I need to live. Now, keep in mind, the reality is that if you go, I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, most of the people that looked like they were living comfortable were making thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, right? I'm just saying that they could pay their bills without struggling, that they can live comfortably, right? Now, I was making a thousand two hundred a month. That's nineteen thousand two hundred a year, right? Nineteen thousand two hundred dollars a year. Right. So now if I go, all right, well, how much am I missing to be what the average people were making at that time? Right. I would look at it like that. Or I would go, I would want to make a little more so I could be a, live a little more comfortable. Right. But I would always look at even not like anytime anybody that knows me knows I don't look at my income based on like a weekly income. I just know what I make a month. Right. I, if you ask me how much money you make, I make it on a monthly basis. I don't even have a set day that I know when I'm getting paid. Right. Like. There are some days that I'll make a withdrawal at the end of the month and I'll get it in the beginning of the month. Some days I ain't make a withdrawal, so I got to do it in the middle of the month and I'll get it at the end of the month. It, I, bro, it, I never know. I live a random, and, I, and, and no matter how much I withdraw, by the time that that time is up, I'm going to need more money. You get what I'm saying? So that's just me being full on transparent. I don't, the way I do, the way that I structure 
my income is based on a monthly thing. I know how much money I make on a month. And from there, if I want to make more, then I'll challenge myself. I'll give you an example. So I know how much money I can make trading binary. And if I really want to make more, I could make a lot more if I get super aggressive. Um, the thing with that is that it requires me to. So for me to be hyper aggressive, one, I wouldn't be able to do it on session. So that's a lot of time that gets killed, right? It gets killed because I, I just can't do it on session. I have to talk on the session. Uh, so two, it would have to be on a time where I'm either just not talking and just listening to my music and doing it, which would leave a small window for me to do it, right? Um, and two, it also means that there's a chance that I could be losing a lot more than what I'm really I'm gonna really be comfortable uh, losing. Therefore, hyper aggressive isn't something that I I do as much as what I was doing when I had hyper aggressive goals. If hypothetical, if you were there when I wanted to make the hundred thousand, that was a hyper aggressive goal. So I was hyper aggressive with my trades. I was taking abnormally i was compounding abnormal high numbers that most people won't be comfortable doing right that's different than like where i'm at now now think about it like this right this is how i look at my life and if you know me i swear to god you know this, i'm not lying i have my expenses right so i have my expenses I have my parents expenses I have my daughter and then i have like i have other expenses like my weed expense and all that right so if we add all of that up right just to give you an example, who here smokes weed? Type it in the chat right now, I, just so we can be on the same page. Just so you can see that I, it costs a lot to live my life. Look, go. All right. How much money do you guys spend on weed a, mo a month? And I'm going to tell you my tab, and then we're going we're gonna to compare notes. 150 a month? $200? Nah, y'all niggas is cheap, fam. Who here's my plug? Do I have a plug in here? So I gotta have a plug in here. No plug of mine in here? Alright, well, I wish I spent what y'all spent. I can, if I show you my, my, uh, what's the app? I spend probably, give or take, anywhere between 1500 to 2000 a month. That is automatically... Uh, included in my expenses it has to be automatically included in my expenses because i will be upset and moody and angry for the whole day if i don't have what i need and i yo there's people in here that should know that bro it's not even worth it bro it kills it for you trust me if you right now nah nigga 1500 an ounce what the fuck i look like bro kind of ounces 1500 bro you capper, right? yo, Robert, don't play, with, bro. What are you doing, bro? You making us look bad. You my cousin, bro. You're not supposed to be doing this crazy shit right now. You know what the fuck? Nah, it's my yo. He lying, bro. He lying, bro. He lying, bro. Hell no, I'm not paying fifteen hundred an ounce, nigga. You crazy, yo? If somebody even tried me like that, bro, I'm slapping the fuck out of them. You crazy? But I'm spending that a month, a month, not an ounce, a month, a month between fifteen hundred to two thousand a month included in my expenses my my rent well you guys were there one so the good thing about when you trade it all right so let's go back we're gonna do ah, this is gonna be a long session but look who was there when i had a, when i when i had that forty thousand dollar week that i used that to pay the i paid my whole rent for a year i just started i've been living here for a year now and i just started paying rent again like i just started paying rent again i i, I just started that shit was almost a year ago now. Look how crazy that shit is. But it allows me the freedom because then what happens is this. Look, if you think about it, look, my rent is 3200 plus my light and everything. Bro, by the time you do everything, when you spend a year up front, you can, you can put that money into other things. It allowed me to remember my dad. Think about all this shit that you guys have seen me do in the last year to give myself freedom and wiggle room. Right? Think about it. You saw me pay my rent for the year, right? You guys saw me with my dad, the whole amputation and all that. The pay, the, remember how much my dad's room was? It was like two, three. It was like what, three hundred and something dollars a day, right? The, all these expenses, right? And I'm able to manage it strictly off of a binary income. The right? reality is that I do have a, a little forex income, whatever, right? Now. Remember what I told you guys? Some of you guys have been following me long enough to say to where I've been saying that I was supposed to bing get a Lamborghini. I've been supposed to get a Lamborghini. 
and I haven't bought a Lamborghini only because I, the income. I didn't want to. I couldn't. I didn't, it was hard to like refocus that amount of income. Remember that, right? So recently, what did I start doing? I started learning to trade futures, right? And I've been trading futures, and I've been doing pretty good with futures. Why am I saying that now? Because now that extra four thousand a month that they maxing me off the first three months, and then all the extra money that comes after those three months. Is money that wasn't a part of my original income and I'm still doing the same work. That makes sense? So I'm able to add a whole type of, I'm, there's nothing changing either. I'm still doing this, look, look at this. I'm still doing the same strategy. So same strategy, same everything. And I'm doing it with somebody else's money, which I, you cannot do a binary. Is this making sense? So now going back to the, going back to the whole income thing with you guys. When you make your income, look at it on a month. I've deviated a lot. I have to talk about a lot of shit, but it's because I wanted you guys to understand that if you look at it from like I look at it, which is I'm not looking at it on a weekly basis, daily basis. I could give a fuck less. For me, it's all about monthly. I need to make at least this much money a month so that I'm comfortable and everything extra from there puts me in a position where I know that I'm not worried about anything. Right. But I prioritize what I need and then I add on what I want. Is that, does that make sense? And you guys should be able to structure your income the same way. Now, that's so wait, if you do it that way, right? There's two things you need to know, right? If, you, if you're going to do it where right now in this immediate moment, you want to start trying to cover more of your expenses, then you're going to have to do like I did and it's deposit more money. No shortcuts around it, right? If you're looking to really make full-time money now and you're good enough to say make five, six trades in a row, then you, which you, a lot of you guys are, Right, then all you need is more money because you're blowing accounts because your accounts are smaller. Right, if and realistically, you don't have the wiggle room to lose a few and then make it back. So now, okay, good. So now, if you're doing the la if you prefer the longer term route, look, if you don't, again, you should have two accounts. Yeah, how uh, that's actually a good idea. How long would you recommend pocket option rather than? usually do so i personally so most of my money comes from so all right so so you know a lot of my money comes from binary which is pocket option and trade up trade one x and iq and all those other brokers i got money spread out on right a lot of my money like 95 percent of my income comes from that right um i do trade forex Queso, okay, he, he hasn't been here for a minute because he's in the process of moving, transitioning. Um, but Queso, he teaches Forex on here as well. Like there's, he has his own sessions here. Um, and he calls out trades. That's more of the longer term swing type trades, right? And um, theoretically, I think that that's, I think, how do I explain this? I think that when you master the strategy itself and you master by implementing it, it, it becomes easier to just transition. Right. And I think binary will help you master it because you're constantly putting it into work. I think the travel binary becomes that over trading becomes real easy and real simple. Right. And what do I mean by that? Think about it. When you trade binary because of the possibility to take 10 trades in a, in a minute, you're, you could do that. Like, there is it's you're not getting margin called. Right. You're, you're like, you know, you know exactly what you're losing. Like there's so many different reasons why when it's it's a good vehicle to learn the strategy. And to implement it and to refine it and to grow it and to get comfortable with it and to grow your confidence as a trader. Because the fact of the matter is it's easier to transition from binary to trading like Forex and anything like that than it is to go from trading Forex or futures and transitioning to binary. Right? Because one requires you to focus more on longer term time frames and longer movements and actual significant moves, whereas the other one teaches you to focus more on all the micro fluctuations, what's actually happening figuring out what's going on with not just your indicators and things of that nature, but opportunities itself. And you do it, not just do you become good at predicting the direction, but you get good at predicting the time frame in which it's going to happen. So binary is a great vehicle to learn how to learn the skill and then learn and predict when that move should be happening. Right? So when you do get comfortable doing that, transitioning or pivoting into other things becomes a lot easier. Because now you know what to expect. You just have to do it on a bigger time frame. That's so essentially now that you like, for example, on this account where I'm doing futures, I'm this, if you look at this and you look at this, it's the same thing. You can't, t if I didn't tell you one was the other, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was which. The charts are exactly the same. 
right? The strategy is exactly the same. The only difference is that on this one, when I'm training binary, I'm looking at it on a mic on a micro level where I'm looking at it on a one minute, two minute, three minute, five minute basis, the most five, and never you're not ever gonna catch me looking at it on five minutes, right? But where the average person looks at it from one to five minutes, um, and on when I'm trading now, now that I'm trading these longer time these longer time frames. I'm looking at it on the daily hour week. like i'm looking at the hour right now for entries i was looking at it earlier but yo ugh, i went through the worst thing this morning right so this morning let me tell you let me tell you something right when i got one when, when i woke up earlier right I, I was at the hospital i looked at this shit, right i looked at this on my phone and this was up here i looked at this have you ever been half i don't know if this has ever happened to you guys have you ever been half asleep and half awake and your reality shifts into your dream and you do something in your dream you think you did it in real life but you didn't do it has that ever happened yeah bam i saw this setup happening and i thought oh shit, i have full confluence and i guess i dreamt that i inputted the trade but i meant to input the trade but I passed out and I guess I didn't input the trade. When I woke up, I thought, oh shit, I made like $5,000. Bam. I was, I didn't make no money. I was, I, I slept, I didn't do it. I didn't do it at all. It was all a sham. It was a, I got bamboozled by myself. I was fucking, bam, ow, oh, man, I was flabbergasted. I, I, I was distressed. But all right. So um yeah this 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 was upsetting but it's the same strategy I I do the same strategy on everything and essentially once you get comfortable with it you understand what you look for so theoretically look here why did I know this was happening well if you know my strategy you see K line cross the D everything happened right after a Dante rejection I saw all of this and I knew I mean right after a super term rejection sorry and I was like oh it's gonna come down I didn't it's funny because I. And I still expect it to come down further. I'm just waiting to, for this candle to close, right? Which is why I was looking at the one out. But I'm still waiting for it to come down further and push back down. However, if you look at it on this avenue, it's not fully aligned. So I'm not, I haven't bit yet. But, and look, it's tempting when you see this candle. It was, I saw this candle when I, when I got to it, it was already like down here. And it was tempting to jump into it. But I already missed where I identified was my ideal opportunity, right? And so it goes back to like, oh, is every trade a good trade or is every opportunity a good opportunity? In binary, you might get away with it, right? Like in binary, you might get away with trying to take every trade possible. But when you're, when you're, when you're risking, like when you're only looking to risk certain percentages and grow your account safely, it's not even, not every trade is worth it, right? That makes sense? So again, uh, for finishing off this whole money thing and before we could take some trades, you can see that, look, at this point, day 54, right? Day 54, so not even two months in. If you're focusing on the 10% a day, right, or a session, you're already at 17,188. Think about it like this, right? By day 60, you made $30,450 in your account. That's what it says, 10%, right? We didn't notice much gains in the beginning because it was kind of whack, but eventually those little $10 gains eventually compound and snowfall. And 60 days in, you're making $30,450. Now, why is that interesting? I just told you that my last job in a year, I was making 19,200. If I was trading this way back then, right? I would have doubled my income almost, right? And I would have did it in 60 fucking days. Now the problem becomes that when, you, when you're trading, and again, the temptation of making a lot of money, you're gonna, $10, none of this is gonna be exciting. And because it's not exciting, you're gonna overlook it most of the time and it's gonna deviate your plan. And this is the difference between discipline being an actual trader, somebody that's disciplined and sticks to the plan to hit his goals, and somebody that's gambling, right? Listen, flipping accounts has more of a gambling side to it because at some point, like I said, you got to understand that when you flip anything, there's a room of losing, right? Anything, it don't matter what you're planning on flipping, you have a margin to lose. If you're going to flip a car or a, a, a watch, what, it doesn't matter. There's a chance that whatever you're planning to flip can lose value and now you lost your money. Does that make sense? Let's see. No, it is, no, no, no. That's you achieving 10% profit a day.
So how you know set a goal of consistently compounding a dollar into one K a dollar into one K per day. The thing is that that sounds like flipping. And so I don't know. The thing is, I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna keep it honey with you. For the people that ask questions like Jared just asked, right? It's really hard for me to answer them because I don't have that mindset. And I can only talk to you about how I am and how I look at things. I've never in my life took a dollar trade. It don't matter how low my account was. I've had to just I've never taken a dollar trade. So I've never looked at compounding a dollar to one thousand. If you ask me three dollars, I can tell you. But even then, to do it every day, you, you, again, you're gonna have days where you're gonna be blowing that. Whatever you deposit, again, think about it like this: There's going to be good days and going to be bad days. And if you don't know when to stop, you're gonna have more days of blowing than you're gonna have more days of making money. And sure, let's say that you can take it fifty to a thousand. How good is taking fifty to a thousand if you have to? What? Let's say you do it three times a month, but you have to deposit. 10 times a month. Does that make sense? Oh, it's abnormally high. I, I can't even, I don't know. I don't even know what this number is, to be honest with you. I can't even tell you what this number is. This number is abnormally high. Now, keep in mind that, again, for the sake of understanding, I need you guys to understand that I am in no way, shape, or form telling you guys to to not be ex uh, not to be aggressive or to not be to have high expectations. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that you can you can. I'm not telling you to not aim high. What I'm saying is that if you have a distorted sense of what's realistic, then it fucks up what you should what you could be doing. Now, if you understand what's realistic. It doesn't fuck up anything because at least you understand that this is i'll give you an example right you should look at it like this you should have a bare minimum which is the 10 percent. that's how you should look at it and if you make a little extra than that 10 percent, then only play with that but don't risk your 10 percent. and if you lost right if you lose let's say three percent it's a lot easier to get back 13 percent than it is to try to make back 20 percent on the next day does that make sense And that requires a lot of discipline and like self-control. I get it 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like I get it. But again, I just want you guys to be able to make money, man. Look, the truth is when you make money, when you start making this money consistently and you, you're in control of what you, you know what you're going to make, bro, it changes the dynamic. And that's the, that's the trick. But you know why it's hard to leave? Because it looks so simple. If you look at this, you guys, you guys got to understand, right? This is all game theory. Like this is all designed to keep you on this. This is the same thing as a casino, right? The colors, everything here is designed to make you want to stay here. Right? Like this is designed to get you comfortable and to like not want to leave when you're here. It's designed. This is what the it's like a casino. You ever walk into a casino? If you if you gamble and you walk in, you you walk into a casino, everything looks exciting. It's like, oh shit. I went I went to a casino and I gambled and I don't even like to gamble. If you if I if you catch me outside and you say there's all some dice, I'm gonna be like, nah. But I went to a casino and all the shiny lights and all the things and the chances of winning money and hearing people win money made me go, oh, I want to win money. So what do these brokers do? They show you every 10 minutes, they'll show you somebody else, somebody else made money. They give you the two simple option of, oh, there's only two options that you have and you can end up making money. And then what else do they do? They show you these abnormally high percentages. The reality is that, and I've told you this before, the lower percentages are gonna make you more money in the long run. Because the lower percentages are only low because you have a higher chance of winning that trade. And the broker isn't in, a, in the business of giving you free money. So they try to tempt you with the So the higher the payout, the, the higher your risk, right? But the broker knows that you're not going to take that uh, willingly if you know that you have a higher chance of losing. So they tempt you with the higher payout. All of this shit is designed to get you. All of this. And that's on every type of, it don't matter what type of trading you do. It's designed that way. You know why? Because it's designed to play on the one emotion that most people feel when they get close to getting something that they've always wanted. What is that emotion? 
or let's call it a sin because that's what it is right ever since i started trying to be christian now there you go greed greed and there's another emotion that comes after greed that a lot of people have as well and there's another sin and that's gluttony now gluttony normally con goes with like consumption right but it, you can apply it some of you guys feed you make enough to feed yourselves but y'all don't have enough the greed and the gluttony comes in and now that little you know originally you wanted to make 50 dollars, but now you see yourself possibly making 500 and now you want to risk that 50 you've never made for the chance of that 500 and in the end you end up with nothing upset bad as a mother right so i wanted to talk about that why because um look i feel like in the space Honestly, a lot of people don't talk about what you need to be. <laughs> yeah, we essentially, right? We're bank robbers. You feel me? We're bank. We're both. What we are is we are people that come in with we're disciplined. But you could call us Navy SEALs. You can call us bank robbers. Shit, you can call us gangsters, right? You can call us. I don't care what you call us. You can whatever you want to call us. As long as we move organized, we are disciplined. We come in with a plan. Remember, the goal is to have a plan. Once you have a plan, you stick to your plan. The reason why we use the bank robbers and the professional, uh, what was it? It was a professional bank robber. And what was the other one? God damn, I don't remember what the other one was. It was professional bank robber. And, uh, fuck, I forgot what was the other one. What was it? Oh, and the professional gambler, right? It was the professional gambler. Oh, he said it. There you go. I forgot. He said it to me and I'm reading like, what was it? So why do we use those two as examples? why the reason why we use professional gamblers and we use professional bank robbers as or at least like high level bank robbers as an example is the following if you watch any bank robber movie or if you ever heard a bank robber tell their story these motherfuckers plan everything to the smallest detail they have a contingency plan and they also have a time limit in which they plan to execute they do not stay past that time limit right most of the ones that get caught is because somewhere along the line their plan got messed up and then they didn't stick to their execution like somewhere they have to mess up on their execution there you go they get caught same thing with a gambler a professional gambler walks in he says i'm only willing to risk a hundred thousand or whatever the case may be if he makes his goal he's out if he doesn't make his goal and he loses a hundred thousand guess what he's out there is no if ands or buts. they're not forcing anything because they understand this everything is designed around probability the probability and probability is only in your favor while time is compressed but if you give anything more time probability starts to sling out of your favor and fall into a side that you might not be comfortable with right i'll give you an example you in your plan it says that you have 30 seconds to get in and out of the bank right because you'll get caught if you don't stick to that plan after 30 seconds that time frame everything else now you know that every second after 30 increases your chances of getting caught exponentially so if you get caught at 35 seconds, you cannot be mad because you already knew that you, you calculated for that. Does that make sense? It's the same thing as people that trade and they go, oh, I'm only willing to lose $50, right? Then they go, they get to that $50 loss and they go, well, now I got to recoup it. And this trade looks like it might be the next setup. And now they go from 53, I mean, from 50 to 53, 53 to 60, 60 to 70. 10 minutes later, they got no hundred, they hundred dollar account has $3 and 50 cents. And they're asking themselves, and then they, and that's when they decide to tell themselves, man, I should have stopped. Like, damn, I should have stopped. In that moment, you look back at all the wins you had and you go, I should have stopped right here. I should have taken this right here, man. At one point I was up a hundred dollars. I should have just taken that. It's a lot of, I should have, could have, I didn't do it. We've all been there. I can give you a perfect example of this shit. And damn, is that I, I'll be having witnesses for this. Yeah, don't chase up. Listen, the fact is, here's what you need to understand, right? The broker is counting on you to feel that way. Remember, the broker makes money when you lose. Remember that, right? So it's the reason why they even you can even take OTC trades. They're gonna make money when you lose. So when you take a loss, your reactions. I am never chasing a loss. Right, like, and even sometimes you guys see me trade. I, if I do do it, I'll call it out. I know I'm consciously doing it. You guys, have, there's never a moment that I'm doing something and I'm not doing it consciously. Sometimes I'm just upset. I'm like, fuck it, I'm willing to take the loss. You guys have seen me do it, but I know I'll tell you, I am chasing the goddamn trade right now. All right, 
Um, but you have to be, and that's, there's a sense of self-awareness that comes with that, right? Like, I know that I'm doing this. I'm full on well aware that this is my action. So when I get the bad reaction, I'm not upset because I did it consciously. The goal is to make every decision that you do consciously. So at the end, you're not going, I should have did this. And, and, and if you don't believe me, how many of you guys have seen me take trades and I'm going, I'm doing, don't take these because I'm doing this strictly off of emotion. And, I, and when I lose, there is no, oh man. The only time there's an all oh man for me is if I didn't think I was going to lose and then I lost. And then I'm like, oh, that's bullshit. Am I lying? Type in the chat. You see me, if, if you've been on a session where I've been typing. Am I lying? I don't have no emotional attachments to none of these dollars. Is that I'm making it or I'm not? I know that based off of my experience and just overall statistics in my trading history, that I have a higher chance of ending the month making what I wanted to make in the first place. So whether I lose a day or lose a week, I do not care. I'm, by the time the month is over, I'm going to hit my goal. Yeah, I laugh. Because at the end, again, you got to understand that this is all part of growing. Right? Like it's all part of growing. All that, that emotion, if, if, if when you take a loss, it makes you upset, then you have an easier time being triggered into chasing. If when you take a loss, you find it hilarious, just like, I don't know, I, when I find, if, it's, if, it, if it really got me and I really find it funny, then I need a little break to take it all in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to actually understand why, like, it's different. If I'm, if I'm upset, I'm, I'm more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, fuck, ah, uh, this is the problem with smoking. What's the fucking word? I'm more impulsive, right? Like, I, I'm just jumping. Those one point losses will get you. I can give you three examples of things that will get you right away. One point loss, the one candle loss where like you was improper for two, the third candle takes you out and then the fourth puts you back up. That one is another trick, right? And the, the, the other one is the break even. The break even is a crazy trigger, right? Because theoretically, what if you were right most of the time and then you just broke even in the end? That shit will annoy the fuck out of anybody, right? The fact is that anything negative that isn't a win can trigger you. Shit, even a win that is a grazing win, like something that's a slight win can trigger you. But that's because a lot of times there's that, there's that sense of, I should have. Do you know what I mean? It's that sense of, man, I should have won that trade. Nah, I fucking hate, you know, break, if you know me, you know, break even triggers me. Is that, is that, because look, the fact of the matter is, I don't like middle, I'm never in the middle of shit. I'm, I'm a polar guy. So it's either I'm right or I'm wrong. There's no, oh, um, that shit triggers, a oh, break even for me triggers the fuck out of me. Because it just means I didn't, I, I wasn't even right or wrong, I was nothing. To feel like I did nothing after waiting three minutes pisses me off more than anything in the world, bro. You wouldn't have no clue. But all right, look, let's look for some trades. I, I gotta walk my dog. Let's call out at least a few trades, see if there's any opportunities. I wanted to make sure I give you guys a lot of times, look, the goal of this community is to make you better traders. And I feel like if I'm just always trading, then yeah, you'll be making some money. Some of you guys will love it. But I think the insight that we, that, I think that insight is more important than anything else. Um, because it allows you to implement on your own. And although I love feeding y'all, right? If my goal was to make this community dependent on me, by all means, I would just make it a feeding community. But it's not. I want to grow as a community. Therefore, I need you guys to be comfortable in your own skill. You're all right. So what you do. It's the reason why I like addressing situations and I like to give you guys proper expectation. And it's the reason why I don't shy away from telling you guys that some of you guys are off base with your expectations. Right? Because the goal is to make sure there's a possible reversal here. Um, so always, again, remember what the rule is. You got to have a plan. And when you have a plan, you stick to it. And you always want to let the data tell you that you're right. So like here, there's a possible reversal. Now, what I need to see to be comfortable. And the problem with this trade is where it's happening, it can trigger one of two things. And if it does do one thing that I need to see, it might be too late, right? So, for example, for me to see a reversal, this candle needs to close under this. But by then, I can't take it for two. I would have to take it for like a minute. And a minute is a risky situation, right? 
Now this looks different, right? Because now this looks like it should. It looks like a continuation. And so seeing this, I can say, well, all right, this candle can be this first one, two. This one could be the third. It can touch this, close red, which would make it that three fake out reversal, and then push it into a continuation, which would seem probable, right? However, if this candle pushes down and pushes it into this channel here, right, then that changes the dynamic. It pushes it, makes it more of a reversal-ish kind of vibe, right? Um, however, if this candle closes above this line, then again, it can gradually push up and do a continuation. So understanding those different outcomes will be really important. So look, closes. So now what do we see? It wicked off from this. Oh no, it closes. Oh, well, let's see where it closes. Right now it's inside. Important. It always important. The data is what's important. Do you ever do rollovers on PL? No, I don't do PL rollovers on anything. Think rollover. All right. So this is a rule, and this is something I've always I've learned. And I used to say this before when I had uh, coaches and stuff. Rollovers are for people that don't want to admit they lost, and so they're willing to raise their risk only to have a chance at winning. I'd rather just take the loss and reposition. Because if I go for if I take if I was supposed to take a ten dollar loss and now it becomes a thirteen or a fourteen dollar loss. I'll be mad as a bitch. Oh, this one dropped to 51. You know, theoretically, though, 51 just means that we had a high chance of possibly catching this trade. I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure that this is going to reject that somewhere at this line. But the thing is, if you look at this, it's gradually like this. And this, I'm so glad that they took this out. Let me close this. And this is USD cash. So what do we have? Oh, you cleared it? Ha <laughs> ha. Took the drop. All right. I, I don't trade China. Now, since I know this video might be going up on YouTube, I'm just going to say I have nothing against China. You know what I'm saying? I have nothing against the Chinese people. In fact, I think that China is great. And in the words of the great, China, I have no problems with it, right? At all. I think it's amazing. However, to trade this goddamn pair is so fucking annoying. So I will not. All right, I will not trade any China at all. None. All right, cool. So now that we know that, we're gonna skip that and let's just focus on the two that are paying decent. All right, so let's go here, here. Uh, all right, so look at this one, right? Now this one is an interesting one, right? Now this candle. All right, so in this point right here, this weird dynamic that's happening, right? It, it, it can be either way. And in fact, now this looks better. I'm going to move this just because I'm... Oh, there was two lines there? Jeez, that's lazy. Let's see. Yeah, all right, cool. So there, this could be a reversal spot right here. 741. It could, right? And it looks like it might be a reversal spot. Um, however, you need to wait because now it will be... Like now, I would take it for two minutes. Uh, two or three minutes around that part. Uh, let's see. It's 67 now? Oh, yeah, I'm going here. AUD cash. Taking it for three. What's the how much I got? 150. I'll take it for there you go. And I'll also take it for uh moment there. And then two. Oh shit. Y'all was gonna say, let me do a five thousand dollar trade like that. Yo, you guys do not care about my account. I be telling y'all, you see, I be telling people, they be, they be, they support you. They want you to win. Y'all was gonna let me do a five thousand dollar trade, son. Y'all hate me for real. Y'all hate me for real. Ooh, child. No, 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 no funny shit. I was looking at this and I'm like, damn, did some of my trades just uh? Go with, with a few seconds left, and I was like, "Ooh, that's so scary." So is that the line? Cool, it's still holding that line. Now, notice one thing, which was different than when I entered my trade. For those of you that are wondering, so actually, I'm gonna ask you, what changed from when I entered my trade to right now? Look at look at this right now. What is the one difference from when I entered my trade to right now? What's happening that wasn't like that beforehand? That is that is a sign of a continuation more than a reversal. There you go, K crossed up. Now, that's, that can be a tricky scenario for some of you guys. And for me, it's for anybody, really. Especially because it doesn't happen until after, like, in motion, kind of. Which can get a little tricky and annoying, realistically. Um, however, if this, I think that based on this, like, if this candle closes under that line, then I should still be good. And if it doesn't close under that line, I definitely won't be. And it'll suck because that I just kind of, like, 
doubled and yeah so this the most likely is going to be a continuation don't let the super trend confuse you actually yeah look, the more likely will be a continuation um and you can actually see it play out so here right if i were to roll over right here i would be setting myself up to for failure right all right now so you see look i'll give you an example of emotional trading right emotional trading will be me going god damn it and then going oh i need to make back those losses right i need to make those losses back and i could think like that for sure but there's no point because it's a lot easier to make back the money than it is to i could just gradually i gotta go back here because i'm yeah still there. all right so i could eat it's easier for me to make the money back right than it is for me to lose it if i try to get greedy i just gotta be it takes a few trades to win back your money right and also take if, if i spiral and i get super aggressive if i take a thousand five hundred dollar trade right now to try to make back what i just lost and i clear it is fine and dandy is great and you know you, you feel like you accomplished something but if you lose it who was here last week when i took a fucking i had like a five thousand dollar loss who was here i was pissed as shit Yo, I was pissed as a motherfucker, dog. That day I was pissed. I ain't gonna lie. That day I was mad. I had a five thousand dollar loss, and all because of greedy too. It wasn't even because I. It was all like two trades, three trades. I just was so greedy, bro. I was so greedy, man. I was mad as a dog. Oh, man, you have no clue. I was pissed off, boy. But look, all, right, all you gotta really do is win a few trades, and you it becomes a lot easier to recoup. If I win these two, and I and then look, I win these two, and instead of going again and trying to maximize my next trades, I just reset. Win these two, reset. Win these two, reset. Win these two, reset. That'll be good. Do that two, three times, and my trades should be fine. Now keep in mind, this candle does something stupid. I most I, I most likely will be triggered, and I'll be compelled to do a YOLO trade. And, I, you know, me being the man that I am of integrity and moral uh, high ground, this broker better not disrespect me. There you go. All right. I was about to, I was about to, you know, I was about to, you know, this right now. You don't even know. I was about to go crazy. I was going, I was about to take whatever was left above 10,000 and yodel the shit out of it. But uh, I have to, thank God. So now going here, we look right now. This could be a reversal. What do you need to see here to confirm that it's whether or not it's a reversal? For those of you that know, look, what do I need to see? What do I need to firmly see? And I go, ooh, this most likely is going to be a reversal. We already see one thing. There's one thing we need to see this candle do. What is it? Come on. You got three seconds to decide. Two seconds. Nobody said it. I'll tell you. There, you take it. You can take. Oh! Oh, no, it's still here. Yeah, you can take this for two minutes. I know the super trend is there and it might look tricky, but yeah, I'm taking it. Oh, I can't get in. It's already taken off. Forget it. I got it. I'm I'm greedy. I'm thirsty like that. I ain't gonna lie. I had to I had to jump in regardless. I'm a thirst bucket. I'm a thirst bucket. Now what you needed to see it do was close inside of the counter, which it did. But you did. Now it could get tricky though, and I'll tell you where it could get tricky. There's a chance that this could be a, re a short term reversal that rejects either at this line or this line. I believe that it'll reject more at this line than this line, but I'm just telling you that is a chance. It is a possibility. And the only reason why I say that is the, how gradual, how these candles, the gap gradually increased relatively quickly, which means that the momentum up was a lot stronger than the momentum down. Um, but you never know. We'll see in a second. I got 14 seconds left, so, I, you know, I hope. It did close. Yeah, no, you're right. Oh, in the last 10 seconds, it's going to play with me in disrespect. Nope, it's not. It's not. Oh, it might. Who knows? Thank God I didn't reset. You see, look. And it goes back to, like, remember how I told you I reput? What? Oh, it pulled back the last second and got me. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right, it got me in the last second. I ain't gonna lie, but um, literally last second because look at it, it's still ugh. fuck you, Jared. I'm just playing. I'm glad somebody cleared because I got got. Like Jared's the only one that cleared. Everybody say fuck you, Jared. 
Everybody hate on Jared. Where's my shame button for Jared? He's the only winner here. Shame. Shame. Shame, Jared. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way. Oh, well, V2? Damn, we got... You know what? I ain't even mad. You know what? Because here's my favorite thing to know. Some of you guys are in here, and you, uh, you know where I'm going with this. I, I love using this, this one right here. Some of you guys are in here, and I'm giving y'all some nugs. And when I tell y'all this, this is what you do. Going on here, but I'll act like I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I love using that. That shit. That shit always makes my day. I ain't gonna lie. And then, then, then I, all right. Before, because I gotta go walk my dogs. I know I ain't fall out a lot of trades, but we got another session in a few hours. We'll be fine. We'll make that one strictly trading. Fine. I get it with that one. But I got one more. Hold on, hold on. This, this was me a few seconds ago. How could this happen? That was definitely me. I was so upset. And, and and you know I was like, and 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 you know the broker even was like, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I'm sorry, but I, I, you can tell I'm, I I just enjoy myself. But all right, look, um, for those of you that took the trades that you cleared, good. For those of you that took the trades like me and got smacked in the last second, up dies. Um, we'll be back later to make more money. Um, we didn't really take many trades. I was focusing more on like giving you insight. The next session that we have later will be strictly trading. We'll, we'll come and we'll make our money and we'll brag about it in the session results section so that everybody can see that they're missing out. All right. But with all that being said, oh, and uh, don't everybody don't forget to don't forget to like tell Jared. I don't, I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing. That you could, just write to Jared. Just write something. They just in quotes something. He'll be happy. Right, Jared. Jared Shane Swanson. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a bit. Um, this video will be uploaded by later on today, tonight. And uh, I hope you guys have fun. I hope you guys learned something. And uh, yeah, we'll be back on later. With that being said, I'm out. Bye.